okay guys so uh, today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, one of the advanced uh, uh, advanced casting process that is evaporative pattern casting okay so uh, this process uh, actually it's uh, completely the theory okay so i have divided this into two lectures first is uh, today that we are going to discuss and next one uh, so uh, what the things what is the content that we are going to discuss in this one so in this process in this process we will start with the uh, what exactly uh, the basics of the epc we can say basics of evaporative pattern casting okay this is epc okay then uh, second we will discuss about the working of this working of epc uh, that how uh, exactly uh, the work is happen okay during this one or we can say like or we can say that what are the steps that is involved in this one what are the steps that involved uh, for the working part okay uh, yeah for the working part and then uh, there is an important uh, thing important thing is that is process parameters okay process parameters of epc so this is uh, process parameters is uh, like very very important things because if we are just like uh, still in the sixth semester we are just uh, going through the principal and the working part of this epc or any of the casting process or any of the processes then it's like uh, we are in low standard okay so if we have to increase our standard so we have to go through uh, what the parameters means or uh, uh, apart from the working in the principal part what uh, the possibilities are there so that we have discussed that we have to discuss okay uh, this both uh, these three things that we are going to discuss in this process so we will i will try to finish these two things today that is basics of the epc and the working of epc or the steps that is involved in that and this process parameter part that we will discuss in the next lecture okay uh, for these uh, uh, complete uh, uh, lecture for this e on the epc i used uh, one of the book that is uh, kalpat jian and uh, the uh, one of the paper that i have used research paper okay so these process parameters uh, generally very less uh, we will get uh, that into the books because these are basically the advanced casting process and generally the people work on the basics of the castings okay so it's very rarely available in the books so that's why i use the research paper for that okay so let's start so uh, first is uh, uh, evaporative pattern casting uh, we also call it as a uh, called it as a lost form casting so what is the meaning of uh, lost form casting is okay okay what is the meaning of lost form casting uh, here uh, we are uh, defining this form okay so what is the form is uh, like there are different types of the materials forms generally uh, generally uh, nowadays like uh, for the sealing purpose like aluminium small size uh, thickness sheets are uh, like uh, mounting okay seal on the ceiling and uh, uh, over that basically they are keeping the forms okay or sometimes uh, these uh, forms are used uh, to create some kind of uh, geometries okay so these forms are available so so this form is basically nothing but if we define in terms of the uh, technical terms then we can say like uh, we are using the polystyrene polystyrene okay or basically uh, we are using the expandable form of uh, that polystyrene so this is a expandable expandable polystyrene this is nothing but this is uh, the it is a kind of material only guys okay so this is a polystyrene and we are defining it as a epc eps sorry or simply polystyrene that is uh, ps apart from these uh, there are two uh, two materials which is also uh, we are uh, studying okay so that is uh, one is uh, like poly poly alkylene carbonate that is pac okay and another one that is uh, poly methyl meth acrylate okay that is pm pmma okay so these are the basic category 
of the uh, patterns basically uh, this form we are using why we are calling it as a lost form pattern a lost form casting because this form these are the materials these are the different types of the material all these materials are used means this form is used uh, to uh, to make the uh, patterns okay to make the patterns fine so if we have like all of you are aware now about what is the difference between casting mold and the pattern pattern we are keeping inside the molding sand okay once the molding sand get the shape of this pattern now we are removing this pattern outside from the molding sand and then we are depositing the molten material into that okay so the pattern is important okay so here uh, if we simply talk about uh, the basic casting processes where we are not using any uh, process means just process is like a basic process okay so that time we are using the blocks the patterns of the wood uh, wooden blocks okay so wooden blocks we are much of means wood we are giving a, a shape to the wood as per the requirement okay as per the required shape and size so we are making the pattern of a wood accordingly and then we are depositing uh, means molding sand on that and uh, once uh, the molding sand get that shape we are just keeping it outside and then we are depositing the molten material into that so pattern is patterns are important so here uh, in this uh, evaporative pattern casting the evapor is the name suggests that evaporative pattern casting so evaporation of the patterns okay so if you will see the name that is evaporative pattern casting so evaporative patterns means the whatever the patterns that we are using using that is not melting but that is evaporated okay so how it will get evaporated when you will use a very large temperature difference means if we talk about if we talk about the polystyrene then it has a temperature melting point uh, means boiling point that is 430 degree centigrade okay this is less than 430 degree centigrade and if we are using any kind of the material whether whether it's a non ferrous material or the ferrous material then the temperature is around 1000 degree centigrade so this 430 degree centigrade and 1000 degree centigrade it's a huge difference 600 degree centigrade is there so when the molten material will come into the contact of this uh, these patterns or the form we can say they will not melt that evaporates okay so if uh, uh these are the materials like these are just a few materials because this is available in the book and you will get it very easily apart from also apart from this also like there are different types of the material which is available but uh why we are not using because uh, in the process parameter we will discuss about that uh, there is a density differences there and if we if we cannot maintain this density differences then there will be a chances of the porosity okay so that's why we are keeping in mind and we are using these are the basic uh, materials we are using for the uh, making of the patterns now here is also like uh, as i said that because of the density differences uh, the casting uh, defects will be causes so if if we are talking about the polystyrenes then this material only can be used when we are going for the casting of the non ferrous materials okay so this eps process that or ep uh, ps polystyrene material can only be used when we are talking about the casting of the non ferrous materials non ferrous materials okay and these are like these two uh, which is a pac that is polyalkylene carbonate and polymethylene uh, methyl uh, methacrylate so these uh, pmma these two materials are using when the when we are casting of the ferrous materials okay now why i am saying uh, that uh, density difference is causes because if we talk about uh, the non ferrous materials then it has a temperature around if like uh, magnesium or uh, uh aluminum we are talking about then this has a uh, temperature of uh, like 600 to uh, uh, 1000 degree centigrade or like around 1300 degree centigrade but when we talk about the ferrous materials then it has a temperature melting point like iron it has a temperature of 1535 degree centigrade so it's a if you will compare like uh, if you will see uh, this is a, uh, if you talk about the magnesium then that's 600 degree centigrade so this 600 and 430 200 degree centigrade difference is there so that we have to accommodate okay so when this sudden uh, and how this will be evaporate that we will discuss in the working part so these are basically the meaning of we also call this casting evaporative pattern casting is lost form casting and why uh, what is the meaning of this form is that whatever the material that we are using to making the patterns 
now these are the materials that we are using to many making of the patterns so whatever the patterns that we are using that is lost after the casting that will not uh, that will not be uh, like regain you cannot regain these patterns that will be lost okay so let's discuss next points so uh, process is uh, first this is clear second is uh, the process is vastly used uh, to produce the intricate shape intricate and the complex shape without using the cores so here guys uh, uh, this process uh, is used uh, to produce the intricate which is like uh, complex shape or uh, that's not easy to manufacture means easy to not uh, casting okay so that kind of shapes can be produced by uh, using this epc casting process and uh, this is the most important advantage of this one is uh, without using the cores if i simply talk about uh, the other casting processes or the uh, very first uh, first lecture in the casting of uh, casting terminology we discuss that if we are have to produce a hollow casting okay then uh, we have to use the cores cores is what here cores is nothing but uh, this is the uh, whatever the shape that we have to create a hollow cavity that is molding material means molding sand okay and then molding sand is mounted by the chaplets and once the casting is done this chaplets will become a part of this casting and uh, we can drill a uh, small drill we can do anywhere and uh, by digging we can just remove the dry sand okay that molding sand so that will become a uh, that is basically the core okay that molding sand we are using but here whatever the shape that we have to produce uh, if uh, it is hollow in shape or sometimes complex in shape so there is no need to use the cores if we have to produce the hollow casting why why there is no need i will discuss in the working part okay and uh, why uh, we can produce like uh, intricate or the complex shapes because here i as i mentioned that uh, we are using these patterns like polystyrene uh, pac or pmma so if uh, you just think for an example like uh, uh, as i said uh, that for the ceiling uh, purpose like uh, uh, these uh, aluminum uh, small size uh, thickness aluminum sheets are using and first they are mounting and over there basically they are keeping this form okay so if you will see uh, this form then form can be uh, whatever the shape is required okay that over that form you can just make it uh, by whatever the knives or the cutters that is available in our uh, uh, kitchen okay so that you can use and through which basically you can uh, uh, cut that uh, form okay into the required shape and size fine the only disadvantage is that of this uh, casting process okay only disadvantage that is uh, is i said that this is the lost form casting okay lost form casting means whatever the form or the pattern that you are using you will not get it back okay that will be lost okay so if that will be lost it means that if i have to produce the 100 casting for an example this type of the casting is generally used uh, to producing the uh, piston heads okay so piston heads if we have to produce so it doesn't it doesn't mean that individually we will produce the piston heads okay like ek aaj kar liya kal dusra karenge parso teesra karenge this cannot be possible so okay so uh, like uh, number of shapes whatever the intricate shape that is required we are making these intricate shapes of the loss of this form okay and then we are using it into the uh, our patterns assembly okay so uh, all of you are aware about the parting gate okay parting gate or the step gate that we are using because uh, for the uh, analysis part you had already gone through the top gate design and the bottom gate but uh, we never study about the parting gate and the step gate so this is uh, the example of the parting and the step gate okay so here uh, we are using the uh, we can produce the intricate shape or the complex shapes we can say or without using the cores okay so let's go to the next point okay so next point is uh, expandable polystyrene uh, patterns or simple you can say polystyrene as well okay so uh, patterns are used uh, of for the casting of non ferrous materials that we have uh, discussed okay which evaporates upon the contact uh, with the molten material to form a cavity for the casting means uh, when uh, this molten material uh, will come in contact with this uh, this patterns okay or we can say like uh, polystyrene that uh, basically uh, that evaporates okay and uh, that when it will evaporate the molten material will take place its original position means its position okay at its place we can say 
a PSE that is polyalkylene carbonate and the PMMA that is polymethylene uh, methacrylate. PMMA patterns are used for the casting of the ferrous materials. So please keep in mind guys, we cannot replace it means exchange. Okay, because as I said that if we can, if we will replace it, then there will be a uh, casting defects. Okay, due to the density difference that we will discuss in the parameter part. Fine. So let's discuss uh, the uh, steps that is involved in this uh, casting process. Okay. So uh, first uh, step is like uh, we are making like this is a piston head that we have to produce. Okay. So uh, like here, uh, if you will see this side, this is only like uh, if you will see then this is a kind of a triangle in shape outside and uh, from inside it is uh, hollow. Okay, from inside it is a hollow. Okay, and uh, that is basically a kind of uh, cylinder, hollow cylinder. Okay, so this is a hollow, and uh, this is basically the solid part. This is okay, and uh, this is solid part. Okay, and outside is also like uh, means this is only the pattern that we have to uh, such kind of casting we have to produce. Okay, so what we are uh, using it. So this is the uh, we are first of all we are using the pattern. Okay, we are using the knives or the cutters and we are creating such kind of geometry on that. Okay, so once the such kind of geometry is created, now if I say that uh, we have, as I said, that we have to produce, uh, we can produce uh, this, we can use this casting for the batch production. Okay, so batch production like, uh, we can say like uh, uh, 100 casting we are producing at the same time. But it doesn't mean that 100 can be possible at the same time, but uh, because there is an assembly. So assembly that we have to create. So we can say like uh, we can say like uh, ten casting can be produced at the same time. Okay, means hundred not can hundred cannot be produced in a single equipment. So ten can be produced. Okay. So next, like from one to ten, we can produce on a single assembly. Eleven to twenty, we can process. Uh, we can produce on a second assembly. Then uh, twenty one to thirty, like that. So ten assemblies we can use, and into that we can use produce the hundred casting. Okay, hundred these uh, uh, piston heads. Now, uh, if you will see the second uh, figure, that is a cluster assembly. So what we are doing is, uh, this is uh, this black one. If you will see this black one. Okay, so this is basically a kind of gating system. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, gating system like uh, Okay, such kind of gating system we are using so from here basically these are pipes only okay So these are the these are not only the pipes, but these are the uh, like sprue uh, runner and uh, the gate only okay guys so this is uh, the red color is basically the here we are pouring the molten material this pouring Molten material is passes into uh, passes into these pipes or uh, these uh, getting element we can say. So now it is passes through this side. So if uh, like what we are doing is here uh, we are producing eight assembly eight elements at the same time. Okay. So this is four in the back front side and four in the back side. Okay. So from here like here uh, we have connected the here we are using the gate. Okay. Here we are using one of the gate. Gate will be like if like if you will see from the front view then uh, this will looks like a plane okay but when you will see from the side view then it looks like this okay so this is a uh, kind of a figure okay and here this is a gate which is coming or runner we can say here the gate is there and here we are using uh, i am using the pattern okay so this is basically the gate gating system assembly which is a red figure and here i am attaching one of the pattern now in this side i am attaching another pattern and bottom side in these two sides, I'm attaching these two uh, patterns. Okay. Similarly, back side, like here as well as in this side. So these are the eight assemblies we are producing at the same time. Okay. So now uh, at this gate, uh, this it has a gate uh, which is connected with this uh, pattern. Okay. So now uh, whatever the molten material that we are transferring, okay, that we are uh, filling it inside. So this material is passes through these uh, black color shield and then it is entered into the gate okay then like it is transferred like this and then it is entered into the gate so when it is entered into the gate it will try to come in contact with the patterns okay but here after this assembly only we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, fill the molten material okay because this is just a uh, we can say ke like adha adhura hai abhi, pura nahi hai. so uh, this is the uh, 
this is the pattern assembly that we are creating okay guys so first after that okay this is the second one third one uh, which is a coating we are using so this is a uh, refractory materials Okay, this is the refractory materials that we are using okay so what we are doing is uh, once this uh, uh, assembly cluster assembly we are calling it as a so this cluster assembly is created now uh, we have the uh, uh, we have the uh, setup like flask we can say or container we can say in which uh, we are using uh, we have filled the refractory materials now uh, whatever the cluster assembly is there we are dipping it inside okay there is a like there is three types of the coating technologies uh, or processes available like uh, we can dip it like from the dipping we can produce uh, we can spray by using the spraying we can produce or by using the swabbing okay that we will discuss into the process parameter but here we are using this dipping okay so this uh, we, we have the uh, refractory materials in the containers and uh, we are dipping it inside okay so what will happen uh, when we will uh, dip it inside means we will keep it for some times and then we will bring it out so what will happen that is these are the refractory materials okay so uh, like sand we can say okay so uh, silica sand we can say so if this is a kind of uh, refractory materials then there is a possibility that these uh, these uh, silica sand will attach with the uh, attach with the patterns like if this is a pattern uh, this kind of pattern we have to create so what we are doing is uh, well, sorry casting we have to create so we are we have assembled this with the our cluster assembly and now we are dipping it inside so what will happen when you will dip it uh, dip it inside the refractory materials will be covered in these cross sectional areas whatever the six surfaces it has okay one two three four five six so on all the six surfaces the material refractory material will be covered surrounded uh, these cross sectional areas this six surface areas we can say there is a possibility that if this is a silica sand only and it is not a little bit weight weight means thoda gila hona okay so if it is not weight then there is a possibility that it will not attach with this pattern so in that case what we have to do we have to use some kind of liquid so sometimes only we are using the binders okay sometimes only we are using the binders so you can say like uh, refractory materials or the binders we are using binders like bentonitic solution is there calonitic solution is there or fly uh, fly clay is there so uh, <coughs> so when uh, we can call it as a uh, refractory slurry okay slurry means the liquid particles uh, sorry liquid is there and solid particles also we are using please focus particles okay particles we are using so refractory materials is there means uh, small size particles are there micro in size micron in size and the liquid we are using so now in this container just try to assume that uh, in this container we have a kind of semi solid liquid okay or slurry so uh, liquid is there and uh, refractory materials are there so when you will dip it inside now there is a possibility that uh, we will keep it inside uh, for the some time uh, till uh, there is a proper bonding of this binding material will occurs so this binding material is uh, material is not only the liquid here the abrasive slurry we are using so this abrasive particles sorry refractory materials will also attach along with this binders over this surface so now we can say that as we are use as we are dipping it inside so now we can say that smooth coating or whatever the coating that is covered that's a cross sectional area means the thickness of that coating is constant throughout on each face okay on each face of this pattern so now what happened uh, the it uh, we can say like this pattern is basically coated we coated with the refractory materials plus binders fine so now uh, once uh, uh, it's we are dipping it inside once the completely bonding is uh, occurs now for the time being we are keeping it inside now after that we are uh, removing it inside means removing means uh, we are just taking it outside okay this cluster assembly we are just taking so we can say and we are keeping it for some time outside in the atmospheric uh, temperature only okay atmospheric conditions so what will happen that uh, 
जनरली लिक्विड है तो नो डाउट है कि आप अगर मान लीजिए कि मैं इसको बाहर निकालूंगा सो द लिक्विड विल फॉल सम काइंड ऑफ डिप विल डिपिंग विल बी देयर ओके सम काइंड ऑफ डिपिंग विल बी देयर सो द थिकनेस विल बी रिड्यूसेस बट थिकनेस विल बी ओवरऑल एज द मटेरियल इज सेम सो इट विल बी कांस्टेंट वी आर जस्ट अज्यूमिंग इन दिस वन ओके नाउ व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वंस वी कैन से दैट दिस नाउ दिस बाइंडर्स और द रिफ्रैक्टरी मटेरियल्स इज कंप्लीटली अटैच विद दिस पैटर्न्स now we are keeping this pattern again into a, another container okay so first of all uh, like uh, initially we are filling the molding sand uh, in the container up to some specific height please listen up to some specific height uh, we are keeping the molding sand uh, throughout the cross section area of the cylinder or flask or uh, container we can say over that we are keeping this cluster assembly but this cluster assembly is not uh, now it's basically the Uh, coated cluster assembly, we can say. Okay, so this coated cluster assembly is keep. Uh, we are keeping over the molding sand. Okay, now this is a molding sand or simple sand also we can say. Now from top side, like uh, whatever the rest of the surface is there. Okay, rest of the uh, uh, empty area we can say. Empty area, मतलब जो खाली cross areas हैं आपके. So over from inside of that we are uh, filling the. Uh, uh the sand okay so now you can see that this part okay now you can see that here uh here you can see that uh, if uh, this is covered with the liquid materials then uh, okay this is uh, also inside this is also coated okay this is also coated with the refractory materials or abrasive slurry we can say now this cross sectional area is still open only are you getting my point this cross section area is still open only now this is as we have attached this portion this portion we have attached with the cluster assembly okay up from here we have attached the cluster assembly so it means that whenever you will fill the sand inside this one so that sand will take place inside this area as well because that is a hollow part that is a empty area so this whatever the areas is there here whatever the areas is here so when you will fill the sand inside that okay when you will fill the sand inside that so this area will also be filled that's why i told you that now uh, that uh, there is no need to use the cores okay because is the solid uh, this sand is covered this cross section area this hollow cross section area so this will become solid okay so this Uh, core is automatically uh, is covered by the sand so there is no need to use the separate cores okay now uh, is uh, it is completely filled okay this uh, sand uh, with the sand we have filled this one so now what we are doing we are little bit we are applying the shaking force okay we are applying the shaking force and uh, uh, and again uh, if there is a need to uh, fill the sand uh, from the top so we are filling covering this one completely and at the end uh, like once this is completed we are uh, filling the molten material okay so once the molten material is uh, we are filling now this molten material like uh, if you will see here then this molten material we are filling okay so this molten material travel in this direction right hand side and left hand side both direction it will move towards down side as well okay so uh, down side as well okay now when you will see as it is moving towards the down side uh, it here this is like a cluster assembly so in this material will come so this will move in this direction as well as this will move in this direction so here the uh, pattern is there so whatever the patterns is there means is now is a uh, is uh, this is basically made up of the ps or uh, we can say like uh, some specific materials that is pac or pmma so this is uh, if you will see the geometry of this ps uh, that is available in the form of beads okay that uh, that uh, uh, we can say like a uh, spherical bubble uh, we can say not bubble a uh, uh, spherical solid uh, a uh, sphere we can say so we are calling these uh, solid sphere as a bubble so small size bubbles are there so as uh, it is connected here it is connected with this gating element so as the molten material will come in this direction first this material will come in contact with this beads and this beads as i said that ps if you are using this ps then it has a 43 uh, degree centigrade of boiling point boiling point okay so if we'll uh, this molten material will come in contact with this beads they will basically uh, not only melt but they evaporate as they are coming directly coming in contact with the 600 or more than that temperature molten material okay so now 
is it is a whatever the material that we are using that is in the liquid form so once first it will come in contact with the one bead then second then third and it's like it's, this process will be going on okay so this complete area which is a bead is there that is a ps that is made up of the ps this liquid material will come in contact with that material that uh, beads and they basically evaporate and once it will evaporate now that cross sectional area or the volume has been vacant by the bead so that uh, that uh, volume will be covered by this uh, molding sand oh, sorry the uh, molten material we can say okay so now uh, this green color you can see that uh, this will be completely covered uh, by the uh, liquid material or the molten material okay now here uh, once one question you can ask me that uh, is uh, it is evaporating so uh, is it will evaporate uh, so uh, uh, like when something will be melt or it will evaporate no doubt if it is evaporating it will not be solid but it will be gas obviously and here i have not mentioned any kind of the gas band so in this basically either there is a two things first is uh, like i can answer in two ways first is like uh, here you can use the gas bands so uh, uh, here along with this uh, uh, gating system you can use the gas band but that gas will be removed only of the air that is entrapped during this process while filling the molten material that gas band can be removed only the gas uh, or air that is entrapped during the filling of the process okay because here that is the atmospheric pressure only but when uh, this material is coming that is called complete cross section area of this pipe we can say that is completely covered by the molten material that molten material is moving in this direction so when it will come in contact with this beads uh, these beads are evaporating so where it this material will go so i am coming again to this position that is uh, here you are using uh, the mold sand it's not a molding sand please concentrate okay this is not a molding sand molding sand we just used to fill bottom at the bottom only or sometimes you can directly use the sand only but whatever we are filling in this uh, from the top okay uh, and that is covering in this area that is a simple sand only that is a simple silica sand okay so when we are talking about only a silica sand it means it is a whether it's a wet condition but when this molten material will come in contact with this sand it will become dry automatically it will become a dry because whatever the molten material that you are supplying that is better very high temperature so whether you are using the wet of the wet solid uh, uh, sand it will become dry so when it will become dry whatever the gas that is uh, generated due to the evaporation of these beads or this material that will be uh, gone uh, passes through this uh, passes through this sands and that will come like this okay that will be like this okay so this kind of uh, gas will be passes through that so we can say like uh, now this uh, this uh, sand uh, will be looks like a porous material okay so this gases will be passes through that okay so now uh, this is uh, casting is done whatever the cross sectional area of this patterns is we are using now that is covered by the uh, liquid materials okay so now after some time like uh, once the solidification is takes place as per the different material there is a different timing for the solidification so we are keeping accordingly like one hour two hours something like that and then we are just shaking shaking it out so this is basically the cluster assembly that we are using okay this one and uh, this one you can see that uh, these are the uh, patterns but this is not actually the patterns patterns is now evaporated this is basically the casting okay so first like this is a eight uh, assembly we are using so eight casting you will produce at the same time okay similarly like if we have to produce the uh, hundreds of the casting then we can uh, connect like uh, more uh, assembly we can use or 10 uh, or 12 like uh, assemblies we can use in a single uh, cluster assembly and then multiple cluster assemblies we can use or uh, once the molten material is because it's like a molten material is like a heating melting the molten material it will take a lot of time three to four hours generally okay in the electric furnace so if it is taking a lot of time it doesn't mean uh, it means that uh, we do not have to once we have filled this cluster assembly we do not have to wait if we have the liquid materials okay we have to fill it on another another cluster assembly so that at the same time number of parts can be produced okay then there will be no wastage of the liquid material fine so this is basically the working of this uh, epc process so just i am briefing that uh, that uh, whether these steps that we have <laughs> okay so first is uh, the step that uh, we discussed that is a pattern of the molding and the pattern inspection so this one 
second one is the uh, we are making the cluster assembly cluster assembly means uh, once whatever the pattern that we are making the similar kind of the pattern that we have to produce so we are attaching with the uh, multiple assemblies we are doing at the same time okay then we are going for a refractory coating so as i already discussed that uh, simply we are using the refractory materials but if we are if uh, whatever the refractory materials that we are using if we are unable to coat then we will use the binders okay or slurry we can say then uh, we are using in the uh, sand we are just making it and uh, we are just applying once it is filled we are applying this shaking force or compacting this one so that uh, uh, complete uh, area should be means completely complete empty area should be covered by the sand okay there will be no uh, uh, there is uh, there is no space okay we have to cover like that then we are pouring the molten material and then we are uh, degating it degate means uh, in gate means we are filling the molten material, D gate means we are just making it out, okay? Or shake out, we can say. So these are the processes, uh, steps that is involved in the EPC process. It is similar to the investment casting. In the investment casting only, uh, in uh, precision investment casting, we are using the patterns of the wax, okay? And for that, we are using a se uh, separate die. Okay, so in that die, basically, we are making the patterns of the waxes. And uh, some, similarly, like a cluster assembly, we are using and uh, we are attaching the wax patterns on the cluster assembly. And then similarly, like uh, coating and is to coat, uh, coating and uh, co to coating we are uh, uh, doing. Okay, so this is a similar kind of process, but the difference is only that uh, patterns there we are using of the uh, wax, and here we are using the pat uh, EPC uh, that is a uh, uh, form. Okay, so here there uh, if we are using a separate die, so it will be a uh, uh, it will take a lot of time to make the wax patterns, but here whatever the patterns that we are using that is of the foam base. So simply uh, the machining is also very easy of that. Okay, simply knives or cutters we can use and uh, make the intricate shapes accordingly. Fine. So similarly, uh, some two points is this related with this one. So that we just, so that we will end this. One. So once uh, the molten metal uh, start pouring in the EPC, both physical and the chemical reactions start to occur. Obviously, uh, as we will pour the molten material, uh, the molten material will come in contact with the beads and they will basically try to, uh, there is a physical contact as well as chemical reaction to the start so that that will evaporate. The process begins uh, by mold make mold filling uh, with the liquid metal uh, followed by transfer of the heat energy from liquid metal to the evaporative patterns in the mold okay so whatever the molten material that is coming in contact with the uh, pattern okay so that is basically transformation of the heat energy okay or obviously uh, temperature difference is there so we can say the flow of the liquid metal uh, to make contact with the patterns is also observed when it is eventually uh, makes contact decomposition of the form begins leading to pyrolysis product so whatever the product uh, uh, means at this for this uh, for the time being only for the little time whatever the reactions uh, that is occurring we are calling it as a pyrolysis uh, reactions or we can say whatever the product that we are getting that is a pyrolysis product okay because this melting boiling and evaporation everything is occurring within a seconds so this is we are calling it as a pyrolysis product okay guys so uh, if you have any doubt you can ask me uh, today we are stopping up to here